Mark. Madam Chair, 30 seconds for tape. Well, thank you, Commissioner. And actually, today I have on my hat uh, from the retirement board. So this is actually a retirement association presentation that Pat is obviously very familiar with, and we've been giving to anyone who will listen. Basically, I've made the presentation to the uh, town managers and town administrators, and to the treasurer and collectors association uh, fall meeting. Um, we're trying to get on the agenda of the Slackman Counselors Association, and we will do that eventually. And the next place we'll be presenting this is in November to the uh, advisory board members, all the treasurers of the uh, of the units in the retirement association. So, are you um, more comfortable sitting or standing? It doesn't does matter. matter. It doesn't matter either one. Whatever's convenient. Oh, does I guess for Steve. I guess maybe I'll whatever see. works for you. Work out better. Um, today I'm going to talk about two basic things from the uh, Retirement Association. First of all, I'm going to give you some information on our investment activity, and there's two pieces to that. There's kind of our, our updated investment performance as of 6.30.09, uh, and we also uh, revised our actuarial study as of uh, January 1st, 09. So that's the most recent information we have on that, and that uh, the key piece of the actuarial study is really the assessment. Uh, information. That's what most of the towns and units are interested in. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about pension reform. Uh, that's been a big topic in the news uh, at the retirement uh, meetings. We've been spending a lot of time on what that means, and I will tell you it's not completely clear to us. So there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> a lot of activity in uh, Dalla and Crab. Those are the the appeals agencies for retirement. And also, eventually, I would imagine in the court systems. So, um, so I'm going to talk about pension reform and what the work of the special commission, uh, which has made its recommendations, uh, has done so far. So first, uh, I just want to give you some background. There's the retirement board members. I am the chairman, uh, Mary Kaplan, as you of course know, is your appointee as the commissioner. Uh, Karen Walden is the Mashpee Water Department treasurer and she's an advisory board member. Uh, Randy Sherman is former chief of the uh, fire department in Yarmouth, and he's an elected member. And Mark Foley is the deputy chief in East Ham, and also he's the deputy director of the fire training academy, and he is an elected member. Debbie Cohen is our executive director, and Jim Quirk is our board counsel. <coughs> um, in terms of our uh, members, we have 5,290 active members. We have about 2,400 retirees or beneficiaries, those receiving the benefit, and we have 748 inactive members. And just to give you an indication of, of those receiving a benefit, we have 650 who are between uh, 70 and 79, 445 who are between 80 and 89, and now we have 105 individuals who are 90 and older and that's up 13 percent since we did the last actuarial study which was only a year ago so we have to recognize that our population is aging and aging um, and, and the group of those that are elderly is expanding rapidly um, also I'd like to give a sense of what the benefit level is for our members uh, of course we hear in the news about you know those few and far between retirees who are earning, you know, 200000 a year or 180000 a year, those types of things. But, if you know, the real, <laughs> yeah, and not, and not any of us, and, and the real story is our average annual benefit is $17,782, and, and that's in the Barnes County Retirement System. I think the statewide average is about twenty two or 23000 Seventy percent of our retirees receive less than $22,000 in terms of annual benefits. So um, there's not a lot of people getting rich off the retirement system. It provides them kind of a stable and normal retirement. And the other, I think, curious thing is, is really for a group one individual, which is all of us, and just to distinguish, group two is state police, and group four is, are those police officers, correction officers, those in sort of hazardous duties. But for group one, for most of the employees, both in, the in our retirement system and statewide, I've, there's been some studies done that have shown they, that the individual, through their contributions out of their payroll, is funding about 80% of their own lifetime retirement benefit. So it's a pretty good deal, actually, for the public sector as well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, now just talk about our investment performance, and of course, as you know, 2008 was a tough year. It was a tough year for everybody. It was a tough year for your deferred comp plans, if you have them, and it was a tough year for the PRIP fund, which is where most of our money is. As you know, a couple of years ago, we moved all our money into the PRIP fund. I shouldn't say all, because we have two well, what are closed and real estate accounts that we could not liquidate when we moved our money. That's the ABT, Allegis Value Trust, and the Intercontinental Fund 4. Um, you see it's turned around a little bit. So for the quarter, that was really the second quarter of this calendar year. Print fund was up almost 12%, <coughs> although our real estate accounts were still down. Um, cash up a little bit. And the total fund for the quarter was up pretty good, uh, a little bit over 11%. So that's not too bad. <coughs> Our total fund is uh, right now at $429 million. That's about $100 million or so less than at its high point, uh, uh, about 18 to 20 months ago at this point. In time. Uh, but you see the year, the past year performance, and that encompasses a good chunk of 2008, which was really, really a tough year, was down 24%. Um, the real estate accounts, real estate was a tough uh, sector to be in at that point in time. Bowls were down uh, 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 significantly. Um, cash, <laughs> uh, ironically, it was, it was a good time to be in cash. Um, but the overall fund was down about 24%. That was probably pretty typical for a public sector account. In Massachusetts, there were some that did a little bit better, there were some that did a little bit worse. Um, being in the print fund that year actually hurt us. So. Um, and now I'll talk a little bit about our actual... I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. The print fund is... It's the, okay. I'm sorry. It's the a Public Reserve uh, Investment Trust. It is the state's... It's, that's really where the state and the state teachers' retirement money is held. Uh, a number of the other 106 systems also have their money there. I think about 70 of them have either all or a portion of their investments with the with the PREP fund. That's and the and then that, that fund gets invested in various... Uh, <coughs> Like That's right. Know. They have an investment portfolio. They did a little bit of uh, tweaking to that um, over the past year or so. They hired a new investment uh, advisor um, whose name I can't think of off the top of my head right now. But they actually, over the past year, have been becoming <coughs> a bit more conservative in their investment strategy. Nick. 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 You mean the one for the state? Yeah. Well, no, that's Nick Favorito. He's oh, the, he's the executive director. Oh, okay. No, it's uh, I can't think of the names. Okay. The, the that's okay. It really does yeah. I just uh, since you're asking questions, I, what are the 748 in, in active members? What does that mean? Uh, if you say leave your position, but it's less than that, you haven't taken your money out last, last yet. You're a member inactive. You're not working, but you still have. You may, if you're vested, you have a status. You may not be vested. You can leave. If you're not vested, you can still leave your money in the system okay. for two right. years. So any of those types of people are called inactives. They're likely under 55, maybe. Yeah, yeah. or less. Yeah, you okay. can. They may be working so, in the private sector or something like that. So, yeah. for example, people who because of the, the increase in the amount of money that you have to get for eligibility might b become inactive members? If you're working, you're an active member. If you're not working, but you have money with the retirement system, either vested, and it's, it's vested, you can leave it there. It doesn't matter how long. If you're not vested, you, it, you have to make a decision up, uh, within two years. If you're going to take it out, yeah, take it out, or yeah. you we'll may, or you may say that you're going to go back and work at a municipality it. somewhere or something. So it's any anybody in that status, right? right. Bill, it has nothing to do with the the the, the changes under Chapter 21 won't change anything. Okay. I, I guess I still don't understand. Well, that. it's like somebody who worked for a municipality. Say they work. No, I'm thinking of the assembly, for example, who. You know, that, uh, who yeah. Don't make more than five. Don't make more than a. See, you're confusing. But yeah. Yeah. each of that's a, in, as a case by case basis. I don't know of the 15 members of the assembly what their individual status is. They may be vested, but right now they are working, so it wouldn't matter. They're getting mm -hmm. credible service for it, so they are active members. If they leave the assembly, they may become inactive. But um, but right. it's all on a case by case basis. Okay. okay. 
Um, uh, just to give you a, a, just a brief overview of the actuarial study, the actuarial study determines really its calculation of your assets, an update on your assets, and an update on your liabilities. And we go through this. You're, ha you're required to do it every three years. We've been doing it every year over the past few years because of the fluctuations in the investment uh, climate, those types of things. We've been trying to keep up with it. We're trying to avoid spikes in terms of our assessment to our unit members. Um, and in this most recent one, we did update the actuarial table to what's called RP2000. And really what that, all that means is we're on the most recent actuarial table, so it reflects people living longer. Um, we changed some of the assumption rates for disability, which actually lower in our cases for withdrawal, uh, which was a little bit higher in our case, and for the salary scale, which was a little bit higher in our case. Um, as you'll see a little bit later, Chapter 21, which was the Pension Reform Act that was actually passed and signed by the governor, um, it allowed you to extend your funding schedule two years to 2030. We, in this actuarial study, decided to keep it at 2028 because it didn't make sense at this point in time to try to extend it. Those two years are very expensive. They cost a, a significant amount of money in terms of the assessments that would be made then to our units. So we decided to leave it the way it is. We can still extend it in the future if we wanted to. And just to boil it all down, the assets and liabilities, um, the, the, the difference between the assets and the liabilities tell you how much you have to assess your units every year. And uh, unadjusted, the actuarial study came out that the assessment would have been 20.6%. And what we decided to do was not, uh, uh, we, we recognize that the towns and the units are, it's a difficult and economic climate for them. They are having revenue issues just like we are having revenue issues, just like the state is having revenue issues. We decided to limit the FY 2001 assessments of towns to 10% assessment. Uh, the, the, that's the good news for the towns. Um, the bad news is uh, it will probably be 10% to make up that difference in FY 2012 as well. Um, and perhaps it will be a higher assessment than our normal assessment rate of 4.5% in 2013 as well. It will all depend. We'll probably do another actuarial study or an update um, a year from now. Um, and it will all depend on how the investment uh, climate does and how that market does. So, um, so 10% for the, the units. Now let me turn to uh, pension reform, um, chapter 21 of the Acts of 2009 um, was passed by the legislature and signed by the governor, so it is, um, uh, it is in effect. And these, all of these changes were really um, uh, retroactive to a date certain, and that was uh, July 1st, 2009. So they apply to everybody, it doesn't matter whether you're uh, retired or not retired or active or inactive, they apply to you. So uh, there is some, there was some controversy about that and actually some, the, I think the Boston firefighters or a group of firefighters have challenged some of the statutes under the contact, contract clause of the uh, um, Constitution. So we'll have to see how some of this plays out, but right now these are all in effect. Um, one of the big uh, things it did was it changed the definition of regular compensation. Um, that was an issue that was in the news uh, quite a bit. A uh, number of, uh, I think especially, um, college presidents were trying to get in, and, and legitimately so, because that's what the statute said, uh, housing allowances or types of things like that. Um, so they sort of cleaned up the definition of regular compensation. They took out and made clear a lot of those items that before were considered regular compensation are now disallowed. And why that's important is regular compensation is the portion of your salary calcul. Uh, I'm sorry, of your uh, uh, retirement benefit calculation. It has to do with your salary. So that's when, if it's a definition of regular compensation, it gets folded into that calculation. If it's not, it doesn't get folded in. So that's a, it's a key key piece. Okay, can I, can I answer sure, one other question? So what you're saying is. Um, in some ways, regular compensation is other words like deferred payment of some kind. It's sort of uh, if, uh, so. Uh, a lot of people get overtime. Overtime is not part of regular compensation. A lot. Some people get various stipends for certain things. 
stipends typically are not regular compensation. Housing allowances, those were at one point in time. This clarified the Dow; they are not. That was the whole. That was one of the Bolger issues. Mm -hmm. right. The whole housing allowance thing. So there's a number. There's a re really a list of things that now are in the um, in Chapter 21 that have been excluded from regular okay. compensation. Use of car. Use of the car, all those things, yeah, exactly. That we spent a lot of time on the value of the use of a car right. for fire chiefs, police chiefs, especially, and uh, now it's clear that that's out. Okay. Um, they eliminated the one day, one year of credible service for one day of service for elected officials. It used to be that if you were elected and you served one day in a calendar year, you got credible service for the whole year, that's no longer the case. Now you serve for the period of time of your term that you served in that year. Um, Bill mentioned there's no credible service, and I underline that because it's really just a credible service piece for any position earning less than $5,000. And the so Explain that, to us what that means. I'm sorry? Explain what that is. Credible service, uh, you need, uh, credible service you get for whatever service you are in the position that you're serving. Incredible service is one of those things that's used to calculate your pension. It's your age, the amount of credible service that you have, and your three high, your average three highest salary years. So it's one of those key pieces. So for example, if I work full time 30 years for in the public sector, I'll have 30 years of credible service. Mm -hmm. If I work for 25 years full time and um, 10 years half time, again, I'll have 25 years of full time credible service, and my 10 years of half time is worth five full years, because it's half time service. And so I'll have 30 full time credible service years. And that gets factored into your mm -hmm. um, your calculation. Now, but so, if your salary is less than five, if you earn less than five thousand a year, that year will not count. That's, that doesn't count. Now, for now you're service. out of the mix. Uh, yeah, exactly. You don't so, get credible service for it. So the assembly is no longer uh, 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 a body that would be able to. No. Earn credible service. Yeah, for we a have year. people that have been on there for say eighteen years. That's right. So all of those years have been grandfathered in as credible service. Well, because they're elected officials, the, the, the law provides for a couple of things. For most uh, persons who are not in uh, an elected position after July 1st, 2009, and making less than $5,000, they won't get any credible service for it. Okay? Um, if you're an elected official, and your term expires between 7-1-2009 and I believe it was 1-1-2012? 12, 2012, that's right. yeah. You'll still get credible service for that, the remainder of your term. And then if you had another term after 2012, you won't get credible service for it. So, so if you were in a term beyond January 1, 2009, and uh, and you were still in that term, then no, that that term would be cr uh, considered. Let's say you service. were yeah, um, until your term ended, and then and then yeah, you're up, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. 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 And why I underline credible services? There's an it, it, you can still get the value of the salary. You just don't get credible service for it. So. Um, there are individuals who, because they'll have one position earning a certain amount of money elsewhere that's more than 5000 that they may get credible service for, then they'll have a second position that they may earn less than 5000 but the so they won't get credible service for, but the value if, upon their retirement may have a benefit for them because as long as they're in the same retirement system, they can combine the value of those two salaries. And it would count against their, in their as their average uh, three-year salary. So there's still some value in that. That's why I underline credible service. It's really about credible service, not about any of the other value that may be there for that. On the three-year service, doesn't have to be three contiguous years of service. No, it does not. It's your three highest. Oh, okay. That was, that was three Later on, I'll talk about the pension commission is looking at some different things on that. But right now, it's your three highest year. Okay. Um, they removed the six-year credible service provision for elected officials before elected officials were vested after six years. Now they're like everybody else. They have to be uh, sort of 10 years in order to be vested. Um, they changed the calculation method for members in more than one retirement system. And, and I underline that one because it's not more than one unit. We have a lot of people who are 
who work, say, for the county uh, at the Fire Training Academy, and then they're full-time firefighter in another uh, town on the Cape or a unit on the Cape, retirement uh, and, uh, fire uh, district on the Cape. However, if they work, if you have an individual who works at the Fire Training Academy and is a firefighter in the town of Falmouth, um, his uh, or her uh, retirement calculation method is going to be impacted because Falmouth is a separate retirement system. And what it will do now is, instead of, as I mentioned before, if you're within one retirement system, you would combine their credible service from both positions and you'd combine their salary from both positions and calculate all of it as if they retired from one place. Now, what Chapter 21 calls for is you would calculate one position as it, if it was a separate retirement and you would calculate that separate position in a different retirement system as a separate retirement calculation and they will get two, basically two separate retirement allowances. And uh, we were at the um, uh, uh, PARAC, the uh, Public Administra uh, Administration um, Retirement uh, Commission, uh, in Holy Cross a couple of weeks ago, and uh, one of the PARAC um, um, lawyers did a calculation, did a couple of examples of calculations on how that would impact people, and it can have a significant impact on a person's retirement benefit. Uh, in one case, there was one where a uh, person's benefit would have been about $60,000 annually, and after you do it under the new Chapter 21, it was $40,000 annually. So that can have a significant impact on, uh, on retirees. Uh, it also, and this is an important one, it also changed the calculation method for an accident, accidental disability retirement benefit to the date such injury was sustained. Um, uh, prior to Chapter 21, the law read that it was the last uh, date on your payroll. So it was that whatever your salary was, was your last date on the payroll. And the, the, the issue with this is really for a, num a lot of people under accident and disability, they're either on 111F or they may be on workers' comp, and they continue to accrue some of the benefits that their pay may have. As they try to work through their, uh, their injury, um, and so a period of two years can go by before um, their accidental disability is either awarded or denied. And so over that two-year period, their salaries changed significantly. And now that uh, salary, their, their accident, accidental disability amount is really going to reset back to their, the, their original date of injury. And that's going to have a significant impact for a lot of people on what their accidental disability benefit is going to be. So that's another significant one. Um, some of the uh, other pieces of Chapter 21 I'll just mention. Um, one of the big ones that was in the news was they eliminated the fails of nomination, etc. There's a number of terms that you were able to get a, 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 an additional termination allowance. Um, even if you didn't run for re-election, I think there was the one that was in the news. So they eliminated that piece. Um, some of the things we have to do as a retirement board, we have to notify um, our units prior to a member withdrawals in case there's any claim against potentially their retirement benefit. Um, we have to notify the units first. Um, I, I mentioned it permits the extension of funding schedule to 2030. Um, boards may require uh, our benefit, uh, people receiving a benefit to uh, do direct deposit, it doesn't require us to do so. And finally, uh, my segue, it reconstitutes the special commission to study the public pension law. So let me talk a little bit about the special commission. Um, it was, uh, as I said, put together and the report was required to be submitted to the legislature by September 1st of 2009. Um, uh, it, the recommendations of the commission have to be cost neutral, so if you adopt or recommend a, a proposal uh, that increased costs, you have to recommend a proposal somewhere else that would decrease costs. Um, the commission met uh, over the course of the summer, I know a number of times, and because they were a little bit pressed for time, um, they issued a laundry list report uh, on 9109, and it was a note. It was a series of 31 recommendations, 
um, uh, there was a number of different recommendations in there. One was to um, uh, change the three-year highest average of your salary to a five-year highest average of your salary. Um, one was to prorate health insurance um, based on your years in service, you know, so your health insurance contribution would be based on the number of years of service. Um, so there was a number of different uh, 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 reforms uh, of that nature in there. Um, and then I think they, I actually saw an agenda. Their next step was to try to form a consensus and meet again after uh, September 1st uh, to try to uh, win, a, winning down their, their laundry list and make a, a, a set of recommendations to the legislature. Um, on Friday last week, I got an email from one of the commission members, Ralph White. He said that they had met on uh, Thursday the 1st, um, but apparently they were not able to reach any consensus on any of the items. So they sent the report really as is to the legislature. They sent basically the same report. Um, uh, there was a state senator and a state representative on the, um, on the commission. Uh, one of them recommended that they change recommendations, as it read in the original report, to proposals, and that was adopted. So they sent up a, a laundry list of proposals to the legislature. So essentially they kind of punted on this whole issue. Um, I will tell you, some of the things that the special commission adopted were probably good news. Um, they did oppose Social Security coverage for mass employees. As you know, we're not a Social Security state here for Massachusetts uh, public sector employees. Um, and that's been um, uh, you know, a bit of uh, uh, an issue at, uh, in Congress uh, to come up to kind of broaden Social Security coverage for all of the non-Social Security states. I think the good news is there's a number of uh, non-Social Security states that are fairly hefty. Texas, I don't think, is a Social Security state. I don't believe California is a Social Security state. So, so we still have some clout on that issue. It hasn't come up recently, but. But the commission did oppose that, uh, the Social Security coverage piece. Uh, they also uh, uh, talked about the retaining the defined benefit structure. That's what we have now. Uh, defined benefit, of course, is, as I mentioned, it's you, your benefit is de defined based on your years of service, your age, and the amount of salary that you earn. It's not a, a defined contribution plan. Um, and defined contribution plan is you, the, the, the contribution you make into your um, your uh, retirement is defined. It, whatever it is, it's just a couple hundred dollars a week, three hundred dollars a week, whatever it happens to be. But the benefit is all dependent on what happens in basically the investment market for those contributions that you put in. It's not a defined benefit. Um, and so I think the timing for some of this was uh, worked to prevent a lot of talk about uh, defined contribution plans because of the uh, investment climate after 2008 it was really bad. A lot of people uh, got hurt, especially those holding defined contribution plans. Uh, they found that they had not as much money as they thought they did when they were ready to retire. So, um, Cost neutrality, I mentioned, they adopted that as one of their uh, uh, policies. And there was some recognition of the contract rights issue. Um, there have been some cases in Massachusetts and elsewhere that recognize that a vested retirement um, uh, benefit is uh, uh, the establishment of a contract right. And that the legislature cannot uh, do, uh, just take that right away. Um, um, but that's to some extent, in fact, some of the discussion uh, on the commission was to what extent can you uh, uh, make some of these uh, uh, reforms and proposals retroactive and to what extent uh, do they have to apply only to new employees. And since they haven't ironed out all of the uh, proposals and they didn't vote on them, that issue hadn't been worked out at the end of the commission's work. So. And I just want to add, even at the at the Holy Cross seminar, uh, there were a number of uh, people who were on the commission there. They did indicate that there was extensive disagreement on all of those proposals, and and that must have been the reason that they had um, uh, difficulty trying to reach a consensus on the uh, uh, commission's report. There are two things I did want to mention that I think are interesting. Um, uh, 
Um, uh, one of them uh, is in the commission report. I don't believe the second one is, but um, that's on the funding schedule. Um, I mentioned that uh, Chapter 21 allowed us to extend the funding schedule to 2030 uh, from 2028. That was really, even though it was very expensive, it's a fairly minor impact. And what happened after 2008 and the impacts of the markets, I think some of the actuaries started to recognize that as you get closer to the end of your funding schedule, for most uh, public sector entities on the state, that's 2028. Um, if you have these negative impacts, if you have a bad year in the investment market, you can reach a situation, for example, if the, the 2008 market climate happened in, say, 2027, um, the next year, all of the units in that retirement system, or if it's a single retirement system like Thelma, they would have to make up that, uh, those losses in one year. So they actually started to look at this, I think, a little bit more, and they've kind of come up with a proposal that I think is a good one, and it's really to bifurcate the schedule. And what would happen is whenever the, uh, this, if this reform were adopted, from that point in time, the base unfunded liabilities, any unfunded liabilities you have at that point in time would be extended 30 years. So exa for example, if it was passed this year, those base unfunded liabilities would extend, uh, your funding schedule would be extend to 2039. And then within that funding schedule, after 10 years had gone by, if you had a situation like a 2008, you had a negative impact because of uh, losses in the, um, in, the investment in the investment market, those losses would be amortized on a separate schedule, really, over 20 years. So you kind of any, you take it you take into consideration any negative impacts that you have, and you don't force the schedule to try to pay for those over a shortened and shortened amount of time. And also, good one of the also things that was talked about was this type of uh, funding schedule would uh, create really an assessment corridor for the uh, for the units, and if you were less than 90% funded your limit would be between 4% per year and 8% per year as an assessment that you could pass back on to the unit. So those, those were, uh, that was, a, 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 I think, a, a, um, a proposal that merits additional um, um, thought, and I think that's included in the, the final report. One that's not, and was talked about at the um, Holy Cross uh, session, was to, since we're reforming in, uh, the pension uh, and the funding schedule now, maybe what we should do is look at reforming the funding schedule to include all of these OPEB liabilities. These are the uh, other post-employment benefit liabilities that are out there. Mostly that's health insurance. Health insurance, dental insurance, life insurance. Uh, for most of us, that's what it encompasses. Um, and as you re recall, a few years ago, there was GASB 45. We all now have to calculate what our OPEB liabilities are. And actually, it just, we just finished that and just sent it out to all the units. We were doing it through the retirement system. And I just sent, it, sent that out yesterday. We just got the report results. But the trouble with the OPEB liabilities is you, you're not required to pay for them. And most units, most of the towns that I know, and certainly us, we're not paying for them. We're just kind of putting that liability on our, on our, our audit, on paying for it. Eventually that's gonna catch up. Someone's gonna, you know, at Standard & Poor's or Moody's are gonna say, uh, what are you doing about that number? And so may, this is a good idea, I think, when it's time to maybe look at this since we're reforming the pension um, system now. Maybe we include the OPEP liabilities in there. I think the idea is not to increase the overall assessment to the tones, but to use the assessment that they're paying anyways both for pension and for the OPEB liability, and that way you're, you're covering both the liabilities. So, so that's my uh, that's my presentation. That's very good. And I'll do that Thank in you. December this afternoon. You will. Okay. I'm sure that they'll all have questions. Those yeah, will have individual questions. They, they will have right. all their all impact, all right. That's exactly right. So <laughs> be prepared. And that's good. Um, well, Mark, thank you so much for that, and uh, and Pat, thank you for yeah. um, your work on that as well. Okay. Yeah, you're saying, huh? Yeah, yeah. Now we're right, we're right, uh, we're right on time. Gail, I think Gail, we we have you here. You're you're uh, just here to listen to. The oh, you were just here to listen. Featured item. No, we now we're going to do our budget price. Oh, the that's correct. correct. Okay. What is going to be our next? What will be our budget process?
Yeah, I put that on the agenda because I know kind of in passing we have sort of said you gotta start thinking about things. You know, yeah, we have to start thinking about it. We want to maybe do something different with the budget this year. So that's why, you know, it's kind of a free for all discussion. I haven't really put any pieces together for it. Um, I think maybe we can do a little brainstorming about it. Um, you know, typically our budget process, just to go over it with you, I guess, is it'll start at the end of this month, and I will hand out uh, what I call a quest package to the department. Is it going to think about um, which is typically new things that they're posing, new programs, required uh, to do to try to develop measures for those program goals. And goals are maybe less uh, adept at. Uh, identifying concrete measures and things. That's always the hardest part of a goal-based and performance-based budget. Um, but, you know, you know I'm, I have to say, you know, after that point in time, do we really use that information as much as we could? No, I have to say we don't. We maybe don't use it as, as much as we could, or we don't track it as much as we could. We'd probably do that a little bit better. What about the programmatic uh, nature of the budget? Uh, how, do we, how does that come into account? You say it's a uh, what's the word you used? Program budget? Uh, no, the other word yeah. you used. It's just their overall as budget as and then their... Performance based. Yeah, well, that, that's what I mean. A program budget typically breaks a department's activities down into programs, and I think we typically do that, mm -hmm. um, although I'd have to say they're probably um, based on more of a, a traditional programmatic than a maybe newer realignment look. Um, that is to say, they build things within the boxes that they have. They don't look at new boxes, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I don't know if that's fair. Would you say that's fair? Absolutely. Yeah. Yours is a little bit different because yours are, they are kind of what they are, transportation, mm -hmm. right. we, we do a water quality, process. yeah. Um, well, that is typically how we've done it. I know that you all have gone through a strategic planning process, and I didn't know if there would be a new focus on those new And that could be part of it, exactly. Yeah, we have a, a set of strategic plans that now that we... But we ha that hasn't become a final product yet. That has not. No, I do have it. Uh, I, I've got to wrap some uh, uh, narrative around it, but I do have the final Gantt charts and everything. That's all ready to go. So. Yeah, and um, uh, uh, Paul and Elizabeth um, presented their, um, yeah. you know, his, his job description right. with um, yeah. And his goals, and and actually, it was a very well done um, yeah. style. Right. Yeah. I know that these things are all uh, in the out. The outcome is the same. I mean, yeah. You're looking for the same outcome in the end, but it's it's um, the style. And I do have to say that I, uh, from what I've gathered uh, in our strategic plan, a lot of people just don't get the the Gantt chart. And, and it <coughs> seems to me, from what. Uh, Elizabeth did with Paul is that she spent a lot of time with him individually and with the executive group there, your, your um, key people, to talk about the agency, its goals, and then how is he going to uh, carry that forward. And then she's going to be going into each of the different departments to do very similar types of things. Right. So it was a very long process and it was one person uh, kind of um, being the, the facilitator of that. Mm. And I Well we do that I, you know, I do that for all of the department managers that I oversee as well. We sit down every year and we do a goal setting process for their individual goals mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that their individual goals kind of match up with what the department goals are. Mm -hmm. So it's just at a little bit higher level. Right. I right. thought that the purpose of the Gantt chart was similar to the uh, to the underlayment on that uh, you know on the OG whatever yes. the acronym was, right, because it did have timelines in the, there in the, the Gantt process. You know, just as an observation, it seemed to contribute to that. And I think the thing was, wasn't there some, uh, there was responsibility identified in that, uh, in those Gantt charts? Yes, who yes. owns the, who owns the, who owns the, who owns the objective? But the, uh, but the uh, were there metrics in there? Maybe there were any. When you say metrics, what do you mean? mean like, uh, uh, one of the things that was included in the, uh, in Paul's presentation was some estimate of what represents success or what you know what type of measures you were looking for. No, I don't believe there are in the ones that Jerry puts again. I don't believe we have measures on that. So perhaps I as a, you know in order to move that forward, if for example I might suggest that um, if you look at the 
the information that we already have in the Gantt chart, which identifies the, uh, the program, uh, the timeline, the responsibility, if we put, if we added to that some measure of, uh, let's see, of, uh, of success, uh, then perhaps that would that would fill that out. And, and Elizabeth, it was Elizabeth Hughes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And maybe if we asked her to, just as a suggestion, ask mm -hmm. her to look at we've, what we've already done, to see whether or not it would be amenable to, you know, let's say to with that addition to make it more useful. I I heartily agree. Yeah. I think it would be very good to to have um, have her. Uh, so we'll, be, we'll base it more on the strategic planning goals and objectives that we have. Uh, with some did, uh, you, did you get this? this is I, I've seen that. <laughs> yes, I have seen that. Okay. Um, again, I mean, I think ultimately, um, you know, you are all seeking the same uh, outcome. You know, the same finished product. Um, it, we just see, you know, everybody could understand this. This is just very clear, very... Uh, yeah, well, I think actually the department managers will... Approach. They'll like it better because it sounds like it's a much more um, efficient, maybe, process. It, they won't have to write a lot of narrative. Yeah, and, and they don't, anything. yeah, and they don't, uh, it's it's uh, not confusing. You sort of like, this is what I do. And then it can be, uh, in those discussions... Um, what is it that you're doing that uh, has been, you know, we're, you're doing it because you've been doing it now for five, ten years, yeah. and does it have a place? Because this is where we're really going to have to look in the budget. Um, as what far I as like about it is yeah. it's, it's, it states the objective, very simply. Right. And then it states the goal, and then the strategy for accomplishing that. Yeah. And then the, 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 the measurement. Yeah. And it, and the language is simple, mm. and it makes sense, and, and you can look at goal, you can look at a strategy, and, it's, and and when you see what the measurement piece is, you know exactly whether or not, you will know from that whether or not that goal is achieved, and whether or not that strategy worked. worked. Or maybe they had to and change the strategy. Tweak, right. I, like, I thought it was so simplified, I thought it was a really good approach, yeah, right. than some time-consuming yeah. yeah. But the other thought I had about the budget is some. Um, he just has okay. Yes, Pat. Revenue projections. I mean, what are our revenue projections going to be? Well, for the remainder of the year, but also, what are we going to be able to look at for 2011? What might those be? Uh, because everybody else is looking at a whole lot less money. Yeah, pretty much flat. I mean, I can tell you right now that I was going to, you know, we have September numbers in. And of course, you know, this is a good news, bad news thing that I've been telling you. The good news is September uh, is up 12.6%, which is a little bit higher than September. August. August was a slower month. But of course, don't forget, we this raised our, our revenue to 18%. Right. This is so all because of what, which was, again, we to, just right. proving yeah, exactly. that we, we did the right thing. We did thing. the right thing, no question. But if you control for, you know, right. kind of constant So next dollars, year, against we're this, low, we'll, we'll see slower than we normally are. Right. So it hasn't turned, we haven't seen the real estate market turn around at this point in time. So I, I don't know how departments do their budget, but I'm thinking in terms of revenue projections. So, you know, they, they mostly, there must be some revenues that come in on a departmental basis. But yeah, yeah, we have. Fees for services. Yes, yeah, I think overall we have about $4 million of our 25 million that are revenue ba fee based revenue. So, the biggest piece being, though, from the registry of deeds. Mm -hmm. Most of the others are relatively small. There's the fire training academy brings in some money. The health lab brings in some money, um, but rest, most of them are relatively small. The, the septic betterment program brings in some money. Now, when those fees come in, do they stay within the department or they go into a general fund? Well, most of those are the the, the health lab and the fire training. Those are general fund revenues. General fund revenues. But you know, in the page that I do, which summarizes the department budget, mm -hmm. that number gets put in. So it, it really. So you can see where. You can see where it went. Yeah. So what I'm thinking, in in terms of process, and this is just off the top of my head, that each department offers a program or a service of some kind. It's either an educational program or it's a program of some nature. Mm -hmm. Or it's a specific service, like in the health department. It's more service oriented right. and everything. And then we have the Cape Cod Extension Service, which does a whole lot of things. Lot of different things. So I'm wondering if the departments can look at those services and programs and put a cost to them 
to provide that service over the period of the year. Maybe they already do this because we didn't we didn't get involved in this because we came in too late. Yeah, we yeah. Which is a good do actually. Yeah, they do. So be able to look at the service. Uh, what any revenues that they might receive from those services, and what is the cost to them of providing that service? And in some cases, the service there may not be a cost. Here's the pieces that are not um, cost center allocated: um, retirement, health insurance, mm -hmm. and uh, Medi Medicare. Mm -hmm. We don't cost center allocate those. Otherwise, we could. I could. I could probably well, do I don't that. Know that. That's really. Well, if you want a full picture, the, the other told. thing that's not allocated is that miscellaneous continuum. Now the big piece, kind of comp insurance, workers comp, all that's going to change a little. No, I guess those are the other yeah, stuff is pretty small. Okay. Well, I would working with it. You, I could allocate most of that. You know, your your retirement um, insurance and medical. That's all. But couldn't you allocate it at, at say below the line? And, you know, if you look at the oh, you, operation uh, yeah. of the department and then, and allocate them in a, as a separate. That's, that's so sort of that, how I do it now. Yes, that's how you yeah. do it now. Okay, so then, and what you're looking at is what you want to see is what is the function of the department and what is the cost? I mean, what, what, what is it cost? And, and, and if there are revenues, what are they? And specific. how much are they compared to the cost that we're putting up? I mean, are we like breaking? Well, well what it does is a, pick, a clear a picture pick of, of what each element right. of that depends right. yeah. And I'm not, oh, well, you know, therefore you can't do that with that intention. It's just with the idea of programs, loss to provide them. If you what is it, right. and then you can see if you wanted to from a cost perspective, you data to do that. Try to cut a program. Yeah, that's cool. And, Even yeah. for it's modifying kind of now, that's not true. One of the problems, as I see it, is that uh, one of the services that might be cost efficient, right. part, they're, they're part of what I'd suggest yeah. safety net. But they're to have right. <clears throat> The, uh, uh, the department, uh, you know, George's department, one that significant amount of revenue, mm -hmm. the human service department that has a significant cost. So but, but, but my is not to say we're producing any revenue. Right. That's not I, my I, purpose is uh, services that are important have revenue. So if we have to, we have to, to that particular, yeah, absolutely. then we, well, what are we getting sufficient we need to do? Are we not doing, maybe on a thing doing, is the revenue going to cut service? Yeah. So, yeah. a big yeah. I mean, I would managers are you know, what they yeah. cost for services yeah. going out for things. We're going for uh, you know, going out proposals, mission, you know, right. in, uh, and, uh, and then too for them to they're doing doing that they ought to be doing, or if they don't have them do it, or maybe have some ideas just could be performed. And there is a revenue for it. Mm -hmm. So about that or something that they and doing this over and really see and we'd rather do. Something. And right. maybe that doesn't have a new source, but it's worthwhile that kind of revenue source. I mean, to kind of really people thinking how I, how I would like to discuss the budget is to look at what is before us in the future. Now, you know, and we have uh, we have waste issues. We have you know different regional basis with that regional component are, are helping towns come to the realization regionalize is going to be in there. Uh, and therefore, uh, the interest of their own survival and the survival of uh, the region. Okay. But if I may finish, um, the so I think that we have, we're wishing ourselves, county, and looking at how we're going to meet needs. These programs, some of the programs, maybe they were grant uh, has run out, but we okay. So this was so now we're funding. Do we do we fund those? I mean, types of things that look at the the times of our our, uh, our sense of urgency. The times are coming more and more. Around. Yes, as a county, uh, we. Uh, Department. Now, I look at a programming around a while because are, you know, they're kind of inherited. Um, and that as opposed to a RA department altogether. So. You know, I think that we pay yeah. in about service, including uh, including any sense of urgency or management. Although we can economies, you know, for acting. Itself, so I, th I think we have to be careful when we use the word of economy because I think it's being understood by communities as being no cost and no and and, uh, and, I, and I think that you know that that's that an understanding and I think that's what you're bringing up, Pat, an understanding of what 
the cost of our operation is and and how we can justify the revenues that we receive based upon the cost of let's say generating those revenues leads us to the next question of what things or what areas should we be looking at that would generate opportunities for increasing revenue that are mission supportive because I think that's I think at the end of the day I think that that's what as a policy board I think that's the and hopefully when we get the strategic plan you know that will that will support that kind of a decision well, and the other there are two other points too is that is um, that if there is a fee for a service does it cover the cost of providing the service I mean that's something that uh, department heads usually know very well yeah. and the other and the other piece to that is uh, the department has providing a service that really lend itself well to regionalization and maybe they could come up with some ideas about how if they had more revenue or, or whatever or what would it take if they were going if they were to provide this on a regional basis and what part of the region would they start with or would it cover or you know to try to get them thinking about providing their services on a regional basis Cape Cod Commission has had a lot of experience with looking at fee based because the assembly has insisted that they you know that they raise their fees but at the same time we've had community interest that would you know that would have us what do we call it uh, for, not forgive the fees but uh, exempt exempt fee have fee waivers because you know we were trying to present ourselves with a you know let's say with a uh, an image that we're trying to be more friendly you know to the you know to, especially to the municipalities and to uh, and to other nonprofits that were coming before us recognizing that uh, uh, that they don't have a, you know a source of ready revenue but at the same time the, you know the fee part of it if you were just to do it on an absolute basis and I, and I believe that you know that my time in the executive committee uh, that there were a lot of concern about are we covering our cost as a, you know as a Cape Cod Commission and still supporting those you know let's say the, that those interests within the community that uh, would would make it a true hardship and not and prevent the good that was intended you know, from coming to be so that's you know that's uh, and I, and I just wonder if some of the things that we discovered while you know, while we were you know, that we had seen on the Cape Cod Commission would be some of the things that we would want to get in addition to the, you know to the revenue uh, generation piece we'd want to get to uh, why we have kept you know perhaps some of our fee basis you know you know artificially low if you're looking at it from a straight commercial point of view and yet you know take a look at the responsibility we have as fiscal agents for you know to uh, to the taxpayers to make sure that we're getting you know let's say uh, both a fair return on the money that you know on the money that it costs as well as not going into competition you know that uh, you know with the private sector you know, which is all you know all of those kinds of things that we, you know, we need to look at well let me do this let me develop some sample yeah. kind of budget pages i'll put together kind of the goals and objectives i'll contact elizabeth and uh, you know uh, utilize that program and i'll put together some some goals and objectives you know charts like that i'll put together a summary budget page summary kind of position page <coughs> and you guys can take a look at them yeah. and we'll see if that's, that's the good. format that we like and we'll go forward from there in an absolute okay. basis what uh, you say it's it's flat what is the uh, amount of money that we generated last year well we have a 25 million dollar budget and we always have a balanced budget so mm -hmm. 25 million dollars okay. now I, I think i understand what you're saying bill about the fees i think you know the problem with looking at your fees right now is your customers can't afford any fee increases and that's what you want to think it's probably now is not oh you did it i'm sorry yeah, yeah i could read that so the thing is we talk about budget for start till next july right yeah, and we don't know how we're going to make it this year so it is easy for you yeah yeah this year is okay yeah, consider july and september yeah not too bad you know a couple of years ago, you know, Commission, we had more time to look where we were before we submitted. Somebody that insisted that that time back. And does it have on figures that are Wednesday in February? Mm -hmm. And then for whatever 
reason. Then I've started, mm -hmm. you know. The right. finance committee still here anyway? Well, It's the established tariff process, yeah. Stuff okay. I get I will yeah. certainly have my uh, and I will bring it actually to town in Mitch uh, tomorrow. So I'll bring it as well. There is, it's kind of a summary ladder from the Director of the Ethics Committee, and it's an MM summary of what the key chapter 28 is. Very useful. And I, uh, I might mention that I, uh, I did it uh, as I was talking to the... Uh, ...because of the uh, expense that was involved, and there was no funding you know, to, to support it. And also, you know, that uh, that thing about their running, or they, let's say, volunteers have to respond to this rather than the traditional ways that we've done it in towns, which is, you know, either town council or, uh, you know, or the town administrator sets up a, a program where they go through, where people sign off on, you know, on the uh, responsibility for ethics. And uh, the the other other part was one of the members of the, com of the MMA committee said, uh, that in his opinion, it looked like they were using a sledgehammer, ice water could in, in the response to it. But I thought this info. Yeah. Uh, I have a, for an assembled plan on Route 6A. Troy is actually reviewed back with the lawyer. I think a little bit pressed for time. I ask you to the administrator, me, the assent for the Route A um, approval. Of what is the plan? Uh, it's a particular title filed with the Engineering and Land Court that it's making a change in a county way. In a county way. So who is making this change? A uh, private citizen, and they made a change in the a county way. They have to file this assent with the county commissioners. I've asked Bob Troy to review it and make sure everything is in order. He has. I know he was in touch with them, but he hasn't finished his assent. But I think they are a little bit pressed for time. So in the interest of not waiting till next week, I'm asking you to authorize me to sign the assent once Bob Troy tells me everything's in order, don't worry about it. Just one question, is it a paper way? You know? I don't know. Oh, don't I mean, no. We don't know what they did. Close to a I, I, it, no, Bob's got the plans and the, the documents in front of him. I don't have them in front of me. Said plan the only a taking made by Boswell County Commissioners. So there's a little piece of property that you guys have to take as, because it's a part of a county way at the oh. real and there's an assent that you oh, miss. That's We've done this and before. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 Bob Troy's okay to you and due to let me interest the time tells me it's okay. If you I won't ask back. Yes, I made a motion. Thank you. That's all I have. Pat, I just, I duly noted on calendar for the first at the rest area on Route 6. Oh, I was thinking of so it Mark recently. and I talked about it last week and he and I are going to meet uh, for a little while on Friday and talk about how we might want to move forward with this. You're going to take my name off of it, right? Well, you know, yeah. I'm taking the whole sign down. <laughs> yeah, I, I went by it the other day <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, it's around that time. So that's it good. Is. Yeah, well, this weekend will be the last weekend that, that's open, I think. Right. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay. So, so we're going to begin the planning phase for which is, um, um, you, 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 you. what is your question, sir? Um, providing some more funding for the, this, 
This sounds like a continuation of Craigslist. It did. DPC. Community it says DHCD. Yeah. yeah. Housing and Community Development. Uh, that's uh, who issues the uh, local technical assistance grant. Yeah. It's an well, it's an amendment, so it's it's not a new one. It's okay. an old one. I guess I'm confusing this with the uh, you know with the with the DC. No, and they just brought okay. it back and okay. it was confusing. approved again. They're setting that over. I think you're confusing the two issues. I guess when I'm in here, it's the DCP speaking. I don't think it has anything back before the commission. Or is it here already? They, yeah, they, it was voted on last Thursday, and they voted to re. And he's going to uh, well, change their and they have animals there. Well, thinking cap on Sheriff yeah. Cummings. So just an amend number one between the exec that we have with the tool to uh, welcome you and the eight from two eighteen five conditions. Okay. So everything else is well. I'll second. Aye. Thank you. I have two things for it. Um, the NOAA fund, which I have served on for as my film. On at Christmas, yeah, oh, Thursday, yeah. the last assembly, it is the last meeting of December. And Mary is still on that board. She was there to read that the commission have written a letter last encouraging the women across the town to uh, note the on and to recommend to encourage people, if not just walk and participate. Is that correct? Uh, and uh, I would phone out home for all. <laughs> okay, then that, you, uh, that is, um, but anyway. Um, I know that uh, you spoke of um, Plymouth Rock. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And uh, did you meet with them? Um, no, only because the chamber I had yesterday? three emails requesting filming opportunities, which I have sent to the Chamber of Commerce, Jay okay. Zavala. So Jay and Zavala he met with, you met with me on right. Sunday. He told me that. And um, he was gracious enough to reschedule that for me because I forgot the person. I missed it. But anyway. Um, he has a young woman that's part of the chamber. Uh, uh, of course, her name's it's uh, Gabe is her last name, Nicole Gabe, and she worked with uh, in Orlando with the film commission. Oh, I'm just beginning. Of course, I, I spun off into my idea of our own, Galasso. as opposed to Galasso. Isn't it yeah. called Galasso? Uh, Gabe. It's, Gabe. Yeah, Gabe. I believe it is. So we made whatever. However. Uh, so he was thinking, you know, how can he, you know, he's looking at Falmouth and wanting to position you and, and, you know, getting all the permits ready so that so that there's one person to go to in the town of Falmouth. And then she started talking about it more on a regional basis because she worked for the uh, county of Orlando. Uh, or Orlando, it was yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. So, so she was just saying that um, when the filming would occur, there was one office they went to that already had uh, worked with all of the towns about permitting, you know, what, you know, the police, fire, what is it that's involved if somebody comes to make a movie somewhere? So I just thought it was an interesting com concept, um, something that will be coming before us. I think that the towns, Sandwich is already ahead of the game. They've been thinking about um, Plymouth Rock and positioning themselves uh, to be responsive to these types of calls. So Jay is there and so are you. And, um, but I think that in light of that is going to happen, uh, even though the state might have um, pulled back some of their assistance, they, it looked like they, they're getting plenty of private investment. Um, something we should think well, about. Well, I just wanted to bring that up. County. That, yeah, well, that was after this long conversation yeah. and I kept pushing well, it. And then many he, years ago, we tried to get uh, the Economic Development Council mm -hmm. to look at that, and I don't believe that uh, we got much traction from from them at that time. I thought it was a good idea then. I think it's a good idea okay, now. Okay, well, it's just something that we should be keeping in our in our forefront and, and talk, and uh, we can well, talk to the economic development. Perhaps, and, oh, you're, you're the ladies on the EDC. Right, right. Perhaps you should bring it up over there and find out whether, you know, whether we can get some traction on it, because it certainly made a lot of sense. Well, it, it makes a lot of sense for the county it does, to yeah. be the contact. Right, right. Course, and, and then just and, and have all the it, it goes it's not like it's the word yeah, because uh, <laughs> we're not going to keep it from any town we're going to you know uh, sort of give them all the information about the towns and and it's what is Frank's well, last what's name? happening is is that Cape Cod and is becoming known on a Frank's worldwide last name, basis the guy that does the film because oh, the Papara. email I got oh, was Papara. from an Italian Papara. filmmaker who was in the United States 
and they wanted to, they had a group of young people with them who wanted to become reporters, you know, television reporters, and they wanted to do some filming opportunities and, and have these young people, I don't know, do what, but interview people on the street, I guess, I don't know. So I sent these emails over to the chamber because I figured it was much more in their bailiwick than mine. Oops. But then in talking to Jay the other day, we talked about, and he wants to come before us and make some sort of a presentation. I think you should. Uh, this is a Falmouth chamber yeah. about why this could be best done by the county. Okay, Frank Rapero. Done what? I guess I'm a Like a film commission. It's like a, like a, a film committee. commission, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, to go, we have to like work with them. We're going to work with them in Plymouth Rock on a film. Not so much. Um, no, 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 this is, this is a film. film. Yeah. But Plymouth Rock, Rock okay. is, is going to be attracting these, and they will be looking, people will be making movies, and they'll be looking for uh, designations to film, right? Yeah. And we're, you know, well positioned, and we have lots of talent here. We have lots of sound, and I mean, there's a lot of people that can do many different skills. So, how do you catalog all of those people? How do you catalog the towns, the locations that might be of interest, the yeah. permits that would be involved right. in each this town? To so this is what you have to do. So if you want to film and say uh, Harwich, a this is this is the Harwich movie. section. Mm -hmm. This is who you're going to do. We can help you contact those yeah. people and help you get that. Like through. if you well, want to, well, want to film something at a grist mill, my producer's ready to do it. Yes, close up, Mr. Oh, that's right. You're a producer. That's right. You're my producer. Yeah. And, you know, he's already uh, set up a, a recording studio in his, yes. in his house. Yes, right? I know, yes. We talked about that when I was talking about the open cave. Exactly, okay. Which is exactly. why that's so, so important to okay. get through. Frank Rapero over at Barnstable perpetually comes and talks about why we haven't done it, you know, over the last mm -hmm. few years. He's the one that does all of the feeds for uh, for the Boston, uh, you know, Boston Television right. Network down here and he has a couple of people working for him. Steve Beatty, who's sitting right over there, does a lot of this as well, mm -hmm. right? So we are. Yeah, so it's right a great here. idea, is it not? Yeah, that's from no, the no, that's no, from the print. It would be a great idea. Okay, it. It's only a good idea. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I didn't think about it. It came from this conversation. Yeah. However, but it did start putting off my county bells as opposed to anything else. Um, so anyway, that's, well, that's four or that. five years ago, they actually made a, a movie in Highfield, right in the very beginning oh, of the restoration, and the place looked terrible. But, but they came in and they, they took three or four or five rooms, I forget how many, and they just designed them to meet their own needs. And it was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they, for the exterior, because the exterior of Highfield was so bad, they used the exterior of the National Academy of Sciences, which, as you know, is a beautiful building mm -hmm. down in Quisset, right on the water. So the, what you saw was the National Academy building on the outside and Highfield on the inside. I think she's pushing film. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm only kidding. Yeah, oh, yeah she's, yeah, already, she's, she's already. already she's getting all the locations well, together on film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, one other thing. Okay, or two other things, please. Yeah. Only because I have a movie. Okay. Try to get to on Monday, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Sunday, I went to uh, the uh, walk at half. Yes. Uh, okay, and uh, that, seemed, that was very well you know, very mm -hmm. attended. Uh, what's happened on Friday? Yeah, we did do something. We did it together, didn't we? Um, All right. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, but you know, they, they you uh, watch the whole thing. Do you got one of those invitations for the recital? It's uh, children's code. Children's code. Yeah, we got it. Was and then there's another one honoring Mary Lupetta. Yeah, that was the one for what? She's retiring from that. What? Water. That invitation to yeah. go to the annual meeting of the community. Uh, well, center. Well, yes, and they're having an annual meeting. The, what the, 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 the 29th. Yeah. Okay. So just so you know. Well, Excellent. Can I go back to this letter yes. regarding the telethon? Can you tell me what that's about? What? what? You guys just talking about letters. Okay. Yes. We have sent. Oh, that telethon. We were. We were. We were took calls. Don't we did. No, but as the commissioners, I mean, Mary Leclaire was on the board as a commissioner. And she I said that she. That. She said that there should be even a, a letter on file. That you all sent to all of the boards. Well, now we're now. Oh, a yeah. board select. All right, there's yeah. the second one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first question. And what are we asking them to do? Uh, to we're recognizing the uh, goodbye. Uh, we're um, we're that. Good Hold on, Bill. 
We uh, we want to inform them of the uh, telethon that it's coming up. What a telethon for a Noah shelter. Oh, the Noah shelter. Oh, now is that coming together now? No, I don't no. think we've ever done. And a lot that, of that we way. would like um, them to uh, spread the word. A lot of uh, board of selectmen. Like Noah shelter. We've never yes. done what that. Was I bet you that Mary wrote it because Kara, you know, and she brought it's it exact, in. And herself. I think she and just. That's Kara, right. Look in Kara's correspondence file. Yeah. yeah, talk to Kara. Yeah. And when uh, is this uh, telephone? It's meeting? December. It's the last Wednesday that the assembly meets in December. And that's what we always miss the Christmas party. Yeah, we always miss the Christmas party because we're always going over there. And I think okay. they do it on purpose. <laughs> they don't want to say it. Oh, anyway, yeah, we have, but we're always invited. Yeah. invited. Yeah. Yes. Um, Thank you for coming. Well, thank you. I hope it was, uh, it was a long, it was a long, intense uh, yeah, day. It's interesting, and you know, I think that uh, the first presentation that was made would be so well, uh, so valuable to have it trotted around the Cape where mm -hmm. you can get to easily. The one suggestion I would make is to simplify some of the some of it is too detailed for public presentation. Yeah, some of it, it that's his own personal and, stuff. That's and the other it. part about it is please write out what the acronyms are. What yes, acronyms I know. I, I, I have to that ask that for that all I, I didn't hear that. Because I'm still yeah. not used to the OGSM or whatever it was. What does that mean? Yeah. Right. Excuse me. They needed four, but I have to. It was going to make me win over if you know, if take it over to the know. We would cut out a lot of the, you know, because it's impossible to read a lot of the small print. And uh, we'd, you know, we'd focus on what would be highlights, you know, as far as going forward. Uh, and uh, usually, they, you know, it's fairly easy to do, because basically we're looking at it and we just say, you know, just tell, them, tell my producer, okay, we want to see that, we want to see the other thing. And, then, you know, then, and uh, as we go through it, uh, then... Uh, Paul dwells on those things yeah. that you know, yeah. I've got to for doing it a and, number and of times, not get just bogged down with the assembly on the um, water thing. I just want some of the process. I just give them the report. We're just going to do it on the DVD. Today's going to show you the point. It's going to be on the DVD. That's right. I'll be there. I'll go to the DVD. I'll be there. I'll go to the DVD. I'll come back 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 to the DVD. People do watch them. What about next week? What do we do you want me to schedule Clay to come back and talk about the um, not Clay, uh, Glenn, and talk about the bike uh, pack? Yeah. 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 I don't have anything else. Do we have anything yeah. else? Uh, I have a couple of things. I, what I want to talk about is keep care. They really. Oh, I met with Mary. That was it. I had I had breakfast with Mary Zephyr. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, she put the squeeze on you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, um, <laughs> Good for them. Okay, it uh, comes down to this: uh, that if the assembly were to ask us, have we been in touch with Cape Care? In the meantime, uh, I have been, and the uh, the point that uh, is consistent with what they've been presenting is that they are looking for a revenue stream. Right now, they're looking for an addition to the uh, to the property tax. Uh, I, I shared that with you on that op -ed page there. Okay. And the other piece is the, uh, uh, the uh, property tax. And although you do have the option of retaining your own personal insurance, it doesn't forgive you from paying, you know, uh, every, you know contributing on the property tax. Right. So uh, that that is that is a difference. That's going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough. Well, sell. Preference on start time for next week. Um, the water collaborative yes, advisory is tomorrow okay. at nine thirty. So, okay. 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 Can we start at under the nine? I mean, there's no no assembly meeting. No assembly next week, and we're gonna have Glenn, and that would, that's it. Yeah, because okay, this is the 14th, right? I'll remind you that the 21st is the first. No, you can't get there by nine. I, I, have I, can, I can get there by seven o'clock. On the 21st of October, we have the first board meeting with the IPA, and that's at seven o'clock. So that's it. That's what it's Well, we have the water collaborative. Oh, and then the water collaborative. On the 14th. On the 14th. Yeah, on the fourteen. I could leave. Well, no, we just meet at nine. Yeah, I, I, I can just meet at eight thirty. If you're done by nine thirty, well, let's do that. Can we do it eight thirty? It's okay with me. Okay. Okay, eight thirty next week. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and then across the hallway. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, across the park. Right. Right. The sense of 
implementation meeting on the 27th, <laughs> the same day as we're going to That's the same day as The retirement board for me. So can I be excused? I have some I know. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's, normally I would never ask to be. But yes, I think no, you know, so it, it is. It's very important. I think that it's important we're all here. Well, it won't disturb. So we're going to meet at eight thirty. Eight thirty next week. That's great. Have, uh, so you going to think about that over the assembly? You might want to learn the law, or do you? Are you going to? Yeah, yeah, we should probably it's have that copy. Um, <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So we'll just submit it to Diane. Yeah, just, yeah we here's our copy. We are submitting this. Okay, perfect. Uh, perfect. She can do it. Okay. That's what I yeah. And so uh, today at the assembly we have, um, and apparently you signed Section H last week. And that's been